Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this short game through the con video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Intel's claim of the industry's first FPGA with high bandwidth memory 2. That's something we'll definitely be discussing. And then we'll move over to Intel's Knights Mill Xeon Phi on Arc, specifically the fact that there are a few additional variants now and one of them has up to 72 cores but I do want to start the video out with something a little lighter and that is Wolfenstein 2 or Wolfenstein depending how you wish to pronounce it specifically news on the switch port now there is some concern of how the switch version of Wolfenstein 2 will fare given the fact that Doom obviously was running at 30 fps with lower visual details that's pretty well known at this point but there is some you know, room for improvement um, with the performance of the system. After all, developers are still getting used to it. And to that end, there's some good news because we actually have the same developers who worked on Doom, or specifically porting Doom to the Switch, who are actually porting Wolfenstein 2. And of course, the team in question are Panic Button. I have to say, and this is somewhat off topic, I'm actually really enjoying the Switch currently. I actually have bought one of my own accord and I'm currently enjoying Zelda Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey. And both games are absolutely really, they're just awesome. I'm enjoying both of them quite a lot. So for me, it's quite nice because I haven't really played a Zelda or a Mario game in absolutely ages. So it's kind of nice for me to kind of jump in with a fresh perspective. But anyway, let's begin with Intel's HBM2 processor. Specifically, this is actually produced by an Intel subsidiary known as Altera. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. That is A-L-T-E-R-A. -E and they have launched the Stratix 10. Now this is a field programmable gate array. We've discussed that in depth several times previously. And what type of performance uh, components make up this processor? Well, it is comprised of 5.5 million logic elements, HBM2 memory, and a quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 processor. And they are all joined together on a SIP um, integration. Uh, SIP, by the way, stands for System in Package. Now, the performance numbers are 10 teraflops of single precision output, which is very impressive indeed. And it is process, uh, sorry, built on Intel's uh, 14nm Trigate process. Obviously, since this is high bandwidth memory too, there is an awful lot of bandwidth available. And assuming that you go for the highest um, performance part, you're looking up to 512 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. So what does this thing actually do? Well, it's really acting as a co-processor in a more traditional server. Now, Intel, according to their, you know, various reports, are claiming this to be the first, the industry's first variant. However, if you do some Googling, there's actually another company which released a very similar concept. It's different in some of the usage scenarios, but still, it is a 16nm uh, Ultra Scale Plus FPGA, and it is actually with high bandwidth memory. The product in question is the Vertex, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, that's V-I-R-T-E-X, Ultra Scale Plus, as I just mentioned. So it's all about the wording here, because the company back in their press release, back in 2016, actually said that they will have a HBM product, but at the time of the announcement, it wasn't formally available. And to Intel's credit, they had also released a general product announcement earlier than theirs. But news on this was a little ambiguous. However, there was a white paper that was released on Altera's website. Um, and this, as far as I can tell, seems to have popped up late part of 2016. So really what it comes down to here is product releases and companies are saying, well, they're working on X, releasing a statement to the press but don't actually have a working chip and of course what is very important here is that intel themselves with their product is being reported to be sampling to select customers so the reason i've gone the extra mile here and uh, mentioned about this particular company uh, which also produced the hbm2 package on fpga is because um, some people 
in other news stories have been commenting, hey, this other company claimed to be first, so I thought I'd just kind of throw that in for belts and braces. Oh, and another question that I have also noticed on a couple of different internet threads, and that is, is HBM going to be like another cash level? Or even if Intel will be adding it combined with an ED RAM cache? And the answer is probably not. At the end of the day, HBM2 has high latency. One of the purposes of having cache on chip is pretty simple. It has a low latency. Now, I don't want to go a full rundown in this video of like how cache works because I've discussed it in other videos. Perhaps I'll do a more in-depth analysis soon. But essentially, the higher the cache level, the higher the latency, but also the larger the cache is. So while HBM2 is a phenomenal technology without a question it does have higher latency than let's say a traditional cpu cache so instead you could be looking at this as more a replacement for traditional memory technologies which of course it is and finally we're going to discuss the knight's mill xeon fires on arc now the there are a couple of additional SKUs which popped up on Intel's database, known of course as ARC. I'm going to read them out real quick because as I said there's only three of them. Um, one is 7295, that's 72 cores, with a base of 1.5 gigahertz, turbo of 1.6, and a pretty hefty level 2 cache of 36 megabytes, then you've got the 7285, uh, that's 72 cores, 1.3 gigahertz, or turbo of 1.4, 34 megabytes of level 2 cache. And finally, the 7235 with a piddly, a paltry 64 cores with 1.3 gigahertz base, a turbo of 1.4 gigahertz, and a shameful amount of level 2 cache, I tell you, 32 megabytes. Perhaps the thing that would raise the most eyebrows is the TDP. Specifically of the highest end SKU, the 7295, which once again has 72 cores, the TDP of this is 320 watts, which, as far as I know anyway, it's the highest um, power consumption of any Intel processor, uh, at least as far as I'm aware. If, if someone knows differently, please let me know. But anyway, there's a couple of reasons most likely that this is a thing. The first is that it's, well kind of hedging their bets on the production run. Obviously, in some cases, some silicon just requires more faults if you don't luck out in the silicon lo uh, lottery. And the other reason is that they are adding additional instructions. Now, these additional instructions should, in theory, increase the utilization of the silicon. And the third is also double-pumped execution. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you found it somewhat informative, enjoyable. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.